Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo, Hobo Technos Tech product review. Today I got the Electric 3.0 bike from the company that makes them, Electric Bikes. This is their latest offering in the electric bike market. This is a super bang for the buck model. It gets pretty good mileage, it has a lot of new features, but is it any good? Let's find out. Hobo Tech. Operating the bike is pretty simple, assuming that the battery is charged and installed. You just hold down the power button and it brings the main screen on. Now from here you can adjust pass, which is pedal assist from zero to five. Zero gives you no pedal assist, meaning when you pedal the bike it does not give you any motor assist whatsoever. That's if you really want some exercise. One and two are basically compensating for the weight of the bike, so it feels like you're not really pedaling anything. Then of course three, four, and five are gonna be your highest modes with five pretty much making you feel like Superman. You can see here the top it says energy bar, which I think is a weird thing to say for battery level, but energy bar you can see in this case is slightly over one half, and I have 13 miles on the bike. So do a little math, you can probably get about 30 miles on a single charge, and that's really without pedaling, because I typically don't pedal these kind of bikes. This model does offer seven speeds. In order to shift down, you push forward. In order to shift back, you hit this button. So that helps you uh, change gears. As for the throttle, instead of having a thumb throttle, which I hate, it does have the half throttle. So you basically throttle it just by turning. You can hear the back tire spinning out. So you turn this part, the throttle, you don't need to pedal, you can just power the bike with the throttle directly, which is nice. It does offer a nice cushy seat that is spring-loaded and has a shock absorber on it. Well, this seat is an extra upgrade because I did tell them to give me a couple of the popular upgrades. I know for sure this is one of their aftermarket headlights. It is extra bright, extra large. You also can lock out the front suspension and make an adjustment over here for the strength of the spring. I usually set mine all the way down. These are basic spring shocks. They're not hydraulic. What's extra cool about the 3.0 is it does have this welded in permanent installed 150 pound maximum weight cargo carrier in the back, which is extra cool. And of course, the Electric 3.0 is a step through model, which makes it very easy to get on and off of. And folding it up is pretty easy. You just pull the spring loaded protector there, and then you fold the handlebars down. And on this side, you just pull the spring loaded button forward, unsnap that, and then you can fold it in half from here. Now as for size and weight, we'll go ahead and put that down here at the bottom of the screen. For those of you that need to know how heavy it is, it is an electric bike with a battery. They are heavier than obviously bikes without batteries and motors. In case you're wondering what the heck this space is, because there's the lab, this is going to be my new solar shed. So I'm going to move all my solar stuff out of there for the house and put it out here. So I'm having a building built here. It should be done here in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna have a special install video coming up in June you wanna keep an eye out for. So I actually picked this bike up in Quartzsite in January 2023 during their Big Ten event. So I went down there and I met uh, one of the guys that work at Electric Bikes. He gave me the 3.0 to test out and do a review on. So instead of just getting my own opinion, I actually took it out to my campsite and I let several people ride it. One of them was somebody who's very experienced and has owned many electric bikes. The other one is somebody who's never owned an electric bike and has only ridden them when they were brought out to camp. So two different worlds of people who have or have not really used electric bikes in the past. So we're going to let them ride the bike, get their opinion, and see what they think about it. Okay, so here we have Ke so here we have the Canadian. <laughs> we do. <laughs> here we have Kevin from Canada. He is an expert electric bike rider. <laughs> How many kilometers have you ridden electric bikes? I have 9,600 kilometers on one, and I have 1,900 on the other one. Okay, so you have so, like lots and lots yeah, of over 10,000 kilometers. Okay, yeah. so we we got the electric 3.0. I just got it today. It's fully charged up. We're gonna have random people here uh, ride it around. Kevin's gonna go first since he is the, the most it's, expert it's here. It's really nice, I can tell right now. It's got the bigger size tires on it yep. and not the smaller ones. It's not the really big four inch wide ones, but I think they're, how they're big three, are those? They're 3.0 wide. 3.0, yeah, 20 inch really wheels. nice size. So if you wanna ride it in the desert like we are now, you could probably uh, 
take a little air out of it, give you a little softer ride on it. Yep. So they're already so aired down a little bit for the desert. Post on the seat. Yeah. So when you sit on it, you'll see it gets it's all springy. So that that has as well, and yep. it's got the short shock on the front, which is a must-have for bikes. Yeah. Yeah. You and gotta I was just have looking the shock. at it, and I thought, well, I'll give it a pickup because a lot of times when you, if you're have a bike, you gotta pick it up, and throw it someplace. So yeah. it's not bad. I'd say it was probably. Uh, it's what, probably. Uh, 40 pounds or so? Oh, I think it's closer to 60. Is it? Yeah. Wow. With the battery in it. Not bad at all. Yeah. Now, I think if you I don't think you want to tell everybody how old you are, but a lot of people, they, they buy this. How young through. I am. Yeah, how young you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 68 years young. You're 68 years young. And it's got disc brakes on it, so the disc brakes are nice. Yep. They're not hydraulic, but they're really, probably really solid uh, for stopping this bike. So we're going to take it for a little scoot and see how it goes. Yep, and it is it is quite windy today. Just to give you guys an idea how windy it is, you can look at these flags bending over sideways. So uh, forgive any wind noise. I do have wind muffs on. It's the best I can do. I'm going to set the seat because it's a little bit short. The seat is easily adjustable to different heights. No so, problem. And yep. it does have this bike rack on the back, which it does say max 150 pounds. You can see that. So that's nice. You can it's a built-in bike rack. It's built into the frame. Take you on the back if you want yeah, to. Yeah, it actually has a seat that you can add on. It's what those bolts are for. Ah. You can add a seat onto the back. Like what a, a good like idea. A, yep. And what I like about the rack is it's built into the frame. It's not an add-on. Yes. Yep. Yep. So it's, it's, it's secure. I use mine all the time when I ride my bike. Uh -huh. I have a panniers on the side, and I load them up with groceries and stuff, and I go shopping, everything with it. Oh, he's never ridden this before. I'm going to start this off in low gear, and and uh, see gonna, how it goes just pedaling it. Yeah, unlike me, he actually pedals. <laughs> really nice. You like it, huh? Yeah. It, 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 it handles really nice. It shifts really well. And it, uh, it's got lots of power, lots of power. So how about compared to your other mid-drive bike? Well. Which is probably how many thousands more? <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite that's a the bit thing. more. And uh, I suspect it could keep up. I kind of like the, uh, you know, the throttle when you need it. Yeah. So if you're, if you're going up a hill and you find yourself in the wrong gear and you forget which gear you're supposed to be in, you could always just grab some throttle and Yep, just gun it. And just gun it, yep. Because yep. yeah. that's independent of the gears. Yeah. Because the motor, for those of you that don't know, the motor is actually in the back hub, so it's not connected to the gears at all. So <laughs> the, gears are, the gears are independent. So when you pedal, you shift the gears to make it easier for you. The bike doesn't care. The bike is like a, it's like an EV. There's no transmission. And the nice, thing, the nice thing about a rear hub, as opposed to a center hub, which is mine, if the chain breaks, you're hooped. Yeah. You're, you're pushing unless you've got a spare link yeah. and you can fix it. But you with have the, to carry uh, a kit with you. With the, rear you hub, <laughs> with the rear hub on there, it's quite nice because you can, uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have the chain on there, you can take the chain off and just use the throttle yep. and it'll, it'll take you back home again for an emergency. So. Yep. So do you have any idea like what you think this bike is worth? Oh, I'd say probably about uh, about twenty two hundred dollars. Oh, really? You're you're way off there. Twenty uh, <laughs> five? No, no. You have to go down, down. Twenty seven? No, down the other way. <laughs> yeah, you know, three years ago, this would this would be a two thousand dollar bike. Yeah, it's. But, but it's, nowadays, I mean, this is their. They have a special going on right now. The disc bike is nine ninety nine. Oh, which is they're giving them away at that's that price. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I built my and, own bike. It cost me twenty five hundred bucks. And does does this is this a foldable one? Can yeah, you this fold one's. That one up it, and... Yep, it's foldable. So the pedals fold. Um, the steer, this the bar here folds down, and then it folds right in the middle. So you can store it in your closet if you had it at home, kind of a thing. Yep, put it in your closet or, or you in your trunk of your car or your yeah, RV. If you get an SUV, just pop it in the back there and yep, ride it out to, to drive it out to the any kind of a trail that you want or and, you want and to what's take great, to a park. And what's great is it's a step through. Yeah, and it's so just, I, I've never had a step through before. as the first one. I like it way better. Well, I bought a step through because. Uh, my first bike was a step through. 
because I went for when I went testing e-bikes. Yeah. I, I tested the the boys' bike with the uh, with the bar across there, and I was driving down this alley just from the bicycle shop, and all of a sudden this car pulled out in front of me and I hit the brakes, and the brakes are great, but I slid off the bike, put my feet down, then I landed on the crossbar. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of the brakes on this? It's quite nice, very yeah. nice, yep. yeah. They work really well, you know, and they're set up, they're set up really nice. If this came from the factory like this, it's just really nice. Yeah, I adjusted them a little bit because uh, one was tighter than the other, so I made them both now that it takes a little more leverage to get them to stop because yeah. it was too hard before, like you had to really squeeze hard. Yeah. So for mechanical brakes, they're good. Yeah. They're and, not hydraulic, so that's it, the downside. Again, again this, like you'll, you'll, when you get the bike, you'll have to adjust the controls either down or up. Yeah depending on how you, what you want. So if yep. you were in the market for a cheap electric bike, you would buy one of these? I would, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no I wouldn't hesitation. have any trouble at all driving that. Yeah, cool. Or recommending somebody to drive it. Even a shorter person can drive that, it's quite easy. Yeah, I, I like the fact it's all adjustable. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kevin. Okay. So this is Jen. I am Jen. She's she's obviously female, although we don't know <laughs> anymore with, uh, in this day and age. You just assumed. We just assumed. But uh, what's your experience with electric bikes? None. Okay, so that, that's... I've been on it a couple of times and that's it. That, that's what we want. We want somebody <laughs> who has no idea what they're doing or how to ride a bike <laughs> to give us an opinion about... On how not to fall. About the electric 3.0. All right. So, okay, so go ahead and, and take your spin and then come back and we'll let me, let me know how you think about it. All right. And we're going <laughs> to catch you when you fall. Pretty good. I should kick rocks. Yeah. You didn't kill yourself. Didn't kill Yay. myself. Yay! Congratulations, I Jen. Survived. You, didn't, you didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> We're in pretty smooth, actually. Yep. So and she's already ridden this a few times earlier today, so she's got uh, a mile or two on it probably at this point. Two, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about this bike? You've never owned an electric bike, right? Uh, no, never. You, and you've like really never even drove one until... Until being at the hobo camp. Yeah, okay. So as a complete noob who has no idea anything about bikes, I'm like Kevin who talked for 10 straight minutes about <laughs> every feature of the bike, which is great, by the way. <laughs> uh, what do you think about it? I like the speed on it. The control is good. I feel like I'm not going to go too powerful with it and knock myself off the ledge of a mountain. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's always good. Uh, it's stable. So, so it's really you like the stability. The and you stability. Have the, you have the seat somewhat it's down somewhat, low, like I yeah. like I would typically have it. It's it's low enough to where I can reach, but not have to put my feet down. Okay. And what do you think of like the brakes? They work good for you? The brakes are good. They could be a little better. Yeah. I feel like I have to really tighten it down to get it to stop. Yeah, it does take a lot of pressure to, to get it to stop. So. That's the only downside. But So what do you think something like this would typically cost? Even though you have no idea about what electric bikes cost. Like 2000 Like 2000 That's pretty close to what Kevin said. Yeah, it's actually 999 so it's half that. Oh, that's half that. Oh, yeah, that's... It's, it's only a thousand bucks for this and you're actually getting a lot of bike. A really good uh, standard bike is over a thousand bucks, so... Yeah, you can't even... Like, bike. like the Rad Rovers, which is like the most popular ones, is, is 1500 bucks. And this one folds and down, this is so. way this is way nicer than the Rad Rovers. And yeah, and it folds, and that's a that's a very big thing if you're Storage. camping and put it in the trunk of your car or whatever. Well, even so, a small apartment, you can have this in your apartment and fold it in. Yeah. So if you had a thousand bucks to burn, you'd, would you buy something like this? Yeah, or, or, especially for like uh, city use. Yeah. If I, if I lived like in Irvine or someplace like that, yeah, I'd be using this every day rather than getting in the car. Yeah, especially in nice weather. Yes. Yeah, like, and out, like camping. out here in Quartzsite. Yep. Oh, we got more people rolling in. They're just they're rolling in. As they, we speak. They just don't stop here. They're always rolling in. All right, cool. So you like the bike, and it sounds like you'd get one, and you approve. I approve. Double double, uh, double fist. Bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Jen. You're welcome, hobo. You're welcome, hobo. <laughs> so this is a Rad Rover. This is one of the ones that you could typically get for like 1500 bucks, and... And uh, to be frank, they're they're pretty trashy in comparison to the electric. I mean, the screen, the brakes, the shifting, um, 
the tires and stuff. It's it's all kind of, and then you got the external battery. So that's what you get for 1500 bucks typically. So what are my thoughts about the electric 3.0? Well, it's certainly a big upgrade from the 2.0, but my only gripe with this bike really are the cheap brakes. They did put cheap mechanical brakes on this. They make a lot of noise, they squeal. It stops the bike just fine, but I'm used to hydraulic brakes. My other electric bikes, I have two of them. Both of them have good hydraulic brakes. It's like night and day. You have to squeeze a lot harder with the mechanical brakes. If you got arthritis in your hands, that might be problematic. But like I said, it stops just fine. You just have to add a little more pressure on the levers here. You have things like metal fenders. You got the half twist throttle, which I really like. Now the screen's a little on the cheap side. It's just a black and white LCD, but it does do the job and it's nice and bright. I've never had any problems seeing it in the daytime. The controls are very easy. You can go up and down on pedal assist, no problem. And let me tell you a little secret, which you may not know about most of these kinds of bikes that have these screens with these controls. Now, if you hold the plus and minus at the same time, watch what happens on the screen. It puts you into a special mode where you can change internal settings on the controller inside. So this actually will allow you to change the brightness of the screen. Press the button again, it puts you on number two. Now, I don't know what any of these mean. I have to kind of look them up. That's very likely voltage where it cuts you off at 48 volts. Now, if you wait too long, obviously it takes you out of there. But you can figure out what these numbers mean. It's all internal stuff on the bike that most people probably don't need to mess with but you can mess with it if you want to. The best part about the electric 3.0 is the price. This thing is wicked cheap. They're only asking $9.99 for a thousand watt bike, which is 1.3 horsepower with all the features that I just showed you. This thing will do 20 miles an hour under its own power on a flat surface without pedaling because that's the stupid legal limit in the USA for an off the shelf street bike. Of course, you can go faster than that if you just pedal hard and have a good tailwind. Let me tell you a little secret here, but you have to promise me that you're not gonna go around telling everybody you gotta keep it to yourself. Now, you can unlock what's called class three mode on the electric 3.0, which allows pedal assist up to 28 miles an hour to get into the secret in and out menu, you hold both the plus and minus at the same time. You see it says 1P, scroll through using the power button to number eight. Then you change 32 to 100. And you can either wait for it to time out or double press the buttons again to get back to the main menu. You are now in class three mode. You can go 28 miles an hour with pedal assist. So what is the use case for the XP 3.0? This is really just the perfect bike for getting around town, grabbing groceries, running errands. They do sell baskets for the front and back that will allow you to pack a whole bunch of groceries on this thing. This thing's also fantastic for getting around between camps. Now, I took this out to Quartzsite and I ran it between different camps that were, you know, probably quarter mile, half mile apart. I can run around our entire camp in a matter of minutes, which would probably take, you know, an hour of walking. It's also great for exploring dirt roads and easy trails. Electric also sells a seat and handlebars for the back in case you wanna take one of the little ones with you. That being said, don't take this on mountain bike trails or try to climb mountains with this thing. It's just not designed for that. The 1000 watt hub motor is good enough for most paved roads and easy climb on dirt roads. Electric states that the controller will reduce the power to 500 watts under low load conditions in order to save power, and this is one of the reasons why it gets such good mileage. So what kind of mileage can you expect? That really depends on a lot of factors. First, it's gonna be which XP 3.0 model you go with. Now there's the standard range, and then there's this one, which is the long range. The long range is only 179 bucks more, but gives you up to 35% more range. On my XP 3.0 long range, I was able to get about 30 miles with almost no pedaling on mostly flat desert surfaces. They say to expect about 20 miles on the standard version. So here's the thing, if you plan to do some serious riding or plan on going more than 20 miles round trip in a day, you should strongly consider getting the long range model for the 179 bucks. I think it's really a no brainer. The charger that's included is only two amps. So that's 48 volts times two amps. It's barely a hundred watt charger. And that's gonna take five to six hours to charge the standard version from zero to full, 
or about six to seven hours to charge the long range version from zero to full. So unless you plan to buy multiple batteries, which are pretty expensive or a faster aftermarket charger, you're gonna be limited to that one charge per riding day. You can also increase your mileage by pumping up the tires to the maximum PSI, and instead of using the throttle, use one of the built-in pedal assist modes that forces you to pedal. Remember, you can totally shut off the motor and pedal the bike with no assist whatsoever, if you wanna have a serious workout. Note that none of electric bikes models offer regen braking, but that's really not a surprise at this price point. Electric does provide a chart that will give you a general idea of what kind of mileage you can expect based on the model and level of pedal assist you use. Or if you're just like me, you just like to gun it everywhere without pedaling, expect about 20 miles on the standard version, 30 miles on the long range version. So we're talking pretty huge bang for the buck here. Only a grand for a thousand watt step through folding fat tire bike with all these features from a brand based right here in Arizona. Yeah, that's right. This ain't typical Chinese garbage. You're actually buying a bike that is built here in the USA in good old Arizona. Now, one last mention is that the 3.0 is IP65 water resistant and dust resistant. So you don't have to really worry about getting it dirty or leaving it out in the rain. All the important electrics are sealed up from the weather, so in fact, you can use a hose to wash it when you're done. And that's exactly what I did for this video. I hosed this sucker down with some soap and water, shined it back up after my desert ride. It works perfectly. What if the bike you saw isn't exactly what you want? Well, Electric does offer a plethora of accessories for your bike, so you can customize it to the hilt. Like this one here has the Elite add-on super bright headlight and the comfort seat for us night blind fatties. They even sell a pet trailer. Yes, a pet trailer. You can tow behind your bike so you can take your little fur baby with you on your rides. I mentioned before, they do offer a seat with handlebars, racks. They got all kinds of stuff, cell phone holders. You can just go to their accessories page, probably spend a thousand bucks on accessories for this bike. So. You can customize it any way you want. So if you're interested in the electric 3.0 e-bike, the link is gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen you can type in manually along with a QR code that you can scan with any mobile device that'll take you on over to the electric store page where you can check out the XP 3.0. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Hey.